Hey, welcome back. So we're going to continue on Free Code Camp's Responsive Web Design Certificate, and this is Learn Accessibility by Building a Quiz. So step 30, we just want to add an ID to all of the radio inputs so that we can link the labels to them. So we just want to, um, all of these inputs here, what I'm going to do is select them all using the option, holding option and clicking. And these two, so there were four. And what do we want to do? We want to give them an ID equals to, um, and then it's the question and the answer as well. So I'll just do Q1, Q1 for the first one. And that's obviously done all of them, but we'll go through um, and fix them up. So, oops, and actually that should be A. So uh, let's just do that again. Let's like so, and that'll be Q1 dash A1, like that. And then this one will be Q1, question one, answer two. And this is um, over here. Oops, question two, answer two. What's it done there? Question two, answer one, like so. Um, let's check that over. And there we go, that passes. So let's go on to the next one. So it's just a bit slow. I haven't seen this loading screen before, that's interesting. There we go. So step 31, although not required for label elements with a nested input, it is still best practice to explicitly link a label with its corresponding input element. Now add a for attribute to each of your four labels so that links the label to its corresponding radio input. So all of these labels need a four and down here. And this is going to be the same ID. So I'll just do Q1, A1. And what we'll do now is go and fix these up. <clears throat> like that. And that's two. And that matches the inputs now. Cool. So step 32, give the label elements text such that the input comes before the text. Uh, before the text, then give the input elements a value matching the text. The text should be either true or false. So for the label, we want to be, let's say, true, and then false here. And we need to give the value to these inputs as well, um, like so. What I'll do is select, well, actually, no, we don't need to do that. So that will be true and this will be false, like that. And now when we're selecting these, they're identified um, as such, I believe. And oops, we just want to do the same down here. So uh, let's do that. Um, I'm gonna go outside, true, false. And then within the input, the value, is equal, oops, like that. And I think that will pass these tests now. <clears throat> no, should place the first label text content after the input element. Okay. So we just want to bring these down like so. And where's our last false? Oops. Like that. Uh, there we go, that passes now. So step 33, if you click on the radio inputs, you might notice both inputs within the same true false field set can be selected at the same time, which obviously we don't want. We want only one to be um, able to be selected at any one time as, as radio inputs. So, Group the relevant inputs together such that only one input from a pair could be selected at a time. So what do we want to do here? I believe we want to move up. Um, yeah, 
I think we want to actually put this over here and get rid of this ally, but let's just see. Uh, no, that's not right. So, group the relevant inputs together such that only one input from a pair can be selected at a time. Hmm. I'm just going to check that, see if it should give the first input a name attribute. Okay. Um, I think then if we give this the same name, Q1 for example, it should now flick between the two. So there we go. So that's how we have now basically grouped the two inputs together. Um, and I'll do the same down here. So Q2, that's question two. And now these ones, again, you can only select one at a time because they're the same name, so it can only be true or false. So there we go, that's quite handy actually. Um, cool. So step 34, to prevent unnecessary repetition, target the before pseudo element of the P selector. So we'll do the um, before, I think it's like that with two, um, maybe it's just one actually, let's try that. And content, we'll give it a property of question and, oops, there we go. Trying to remember on this keyboard, there we are. Question number and then the item. So let's check that, perfect. So step 35, the final section of this quiz will contain a drop down and a text box. Begin by nesting a div with a class of form row. So let's just go in div class equals form row. Oops, div like so. And in there we want four div elements. So what I'm gonna do um, let's just create that and drop that down four times. Um, alternating their class attributes with question, block and answer. So what I'll do is select actually just two of these class equals question dash block. And this one is Oh, sorry, answer, like so. And there we go, that's passed the test. So you've got question block, answer, question block, answer. So next challenge. Step 36, with the, within the div uh, question block elements, so these ones, we need to nest one label and slash label. Oops, didn't select both of those. And give the label elements text content. So I'm just gonna say content here, um, and I'm sure we change that as we go. Perfect. Step 37, within the first div answer, so this one, uh, nest one required select. So I'm gonna do that and Actually, it's a um, like that. So this is going to be a select drop-down option, I believe. Um, so we want to give option the first option, and let's see a value of empty string, and the text is select an option. And then subsequent options <coughs> will be the value of yes, and the text is yes, like that. And the third one is no, basically. Um, so no, lowercase, and no, um, sort of capitalized, or proper case, I guess. So there we go. And now we should be able to see on the drop down we've got yes and no. And select an option is our blank empty value to begin with, it's kind of like a, a placeholder.
Step 38, link the first label element to the select element and give the select element a name attribute. So we want to link this, so we can say for, um, this will be, let's say select, and the select element, we'll give it a name, and I'll call it select as well. And I believe, no, that, an ID attribute. So it's the for and the ID. Um, let's have a look, see if that now passes. There we go. So sorry, we need an ID and a name, and then just the four on the label um, to fix those up. So finally, step 39, nest one text area element within the second div.answer element and set the number of rows and columns it has. Uh, then give the text area placeholder dis text describing an example answer. So we just want a text area, um, oops, like that. And what do we want to give? Placeholder will just be like that, placeholder. And you can see we've got placeholder. And we want to set the number of rows. Let's just do five and columns, five as well. Um, I think it there as strings, but let's see. Oh, it's coals. So rows and coals. There we go. So as you can see here, we've got, it's five by five. If I change that to 10, it should, there we go, get a bit longer. And number of columns, if I put 15, it will be wider across. Cool. So yeah, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, hope it was useful, and I'll see you in the next video.